and I video my classes, so do it for several reasons. But we'll get into that. Go ahead and get your handouts out that I sent. I only sent two. Uh, if you don't have them, just get your notebook out so you can write down the important stuff that we're going to talk about. Get your phone out or your calendar, whichever one you use. Get those out. Um, I'm going to talk about calendars and all that good stuff. And let's see, what else am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about basically classroom logistics. Well, something I was going to pull up. I can't remember what it was. Oh, well. I guess it's not that important. One that I sent you was this information here. This is a little bit of information about myself. And one of the reasons I didn't send all my handouts is because half of you don't check your email and the other half don't bring it to class like I asked you to do. And this chair is really getting on my nerves. I walked in this morning and have you ever tried to sit in a chair that's broke? Yeah. The whole bottom down here is broke. Makes you, makes you lean to one side. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> this is a little bit about information about myself. One of the reasons I do this is because a long time ago I used to hand out index cards and ask people, Miss Abercrombie, you might remember that. I don't know, did I do that, do that back then? Pass out index cards? Well, I quit doing it. Yeah, it only took two or three semesters and then it was just too much of a burden on students to write down stuff. So you talk about five or six things, it was just too much for them to comprehend, so I quit doing it. And uh, I just kept doing this because I don't know how y'all are with math classes, but I know that math classes can be very intimidating. And I think that when you make a math class comfortable, it makes things a whole lot easier. And have y'all ever had a math class to our, our class in general in college excuse me, to where you walk out the first day and you don't even know who the teacher is. And I don't want that kind of class. Even though this is a small class, we can still have fun. I found that the smaller classes are more personable. Y'all talk a little bit more and you open up a little bit more and, and it seems to be a little bit better, you know, climate or environment um, than the 30 people and you have this little click over here, and you have this little click over here, and this little click over here. It works out to be better. And in this class, you need it. Let me ask you a question. What's your major going to be long term? Starting here. Accounting? Mechanical engineering. Engineering? Business. We don't know. Okay. Just associate in science. You don't know yet. I'm sorry. Dermatology. Hmm. I think you're the first dermatologist I've met. I mean, I didn't know. You must be going to want to transfer somewhere. Yeah. Dang old baby watcher or sonogram? Okay. That's what I thought. Um, the reason I asked him this, heck, come in. This chair is awful. Look at that. Um, the reason I ask is, one, we have to check because a lot of people are in the wrong class. Um, now, you said you were accounting, you were business, so you're going to go the Calc 1, Calc 2 route instead of the business. That's good. And the reason that's good is because you may change your major later on and the business Calc won't be squat. You need the Calc 1 and Calc 2 that you can transfer to another major if you needed to. So that's a good, good idea. Undecideds, same thing. Undecided, as uh, long as you're going the Calc 1 and 2 route, when you decide your major, they'll look and say, okay, let's look at your math. And they'll see the Calc 1 and they'll go, okay, you got enough math. That's what they'll say. So I think it's very smart that you're using the Calc 1, Calc 2 route. Um, but I just wanted to say that because a lot of people are in 110 and they don't need to be. And uh, so that's why I went ahead and checked that. I want to make this uh, environment as comfortable as possible, so that's one of the reasons I give you this information. Now, this is my cell number. 
I don't give that cell number out just as a token. I give it out because if you need me, that's how you find me. If now, and we'll talk about needing to contact me. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the reason I give that is because I do not want you coming up here, sitting outside my office door and saying, I waited outside your office door for 30 minutes and couldn't find you. I'm not gonna sit in my office all day long waiting for you, okay? Most of the time I'm in here. Now, as you can tell from my class schedule, and I'm gonna send you a, uh, where is it? Is that it? I'm stuck in this classroom from eight o'clock to two o'clock. <laughs> All right, so uh, that pretty much sucks. I didn't realize that until this morning. Um, so on Monday and Wednesday, this is where I'm going to be. So if you need to contact me, just text me or whatever. Now, why should you contact me? The only reason you should contact me is if there has been some kind of emergency in your life, like uh, something that's going to keep you out of class for two days like two meetings because two meetings they're going if you're absent from two meetings they're going to send you an email from the bureaucratic office over there in the library saying you should not miss class and if you need to contact the teacher please contact the teacher i do not send those okay i do not send those emails please do not think that i send you those emails that's some guy in a closet over there in the library that sends those emails all right i ain't got nothing to do with that i don't I hate to say this, but I care about the environment of the class. If you don't want to be in this class, then don't come, all right? Watch the videos from home, send me an email telling me you're still doing work, and I'll work out something to, you know, I'll do something because I don't want you here if you don't want to be here. Uh, I try to make the class fun. I try to make it where you learn, but if you already know everything, then you need to stay home and do a creative cure for cancer. I'd rather you do that, okay? Um, but as you can tell, Tuesday and Thursday, I'm teaching calc at 8 o'clock in the morning and a trig class at 11.10. So this would be probably where most of my office hours are going to be. I don't usually have office hours, and with a class this small, I won't because we'll spend a lot of time in the class going over problems. Because what happens is a class this small you usually talk to each other more and you, you're more interactive with the teacher. So the teacher is going to get more input from you and you're going to send me more homework problems than the 30, 30 people in the classroom would. Then we're going to do a lot more in depth on the homework because you're sending me more problems. Okay, you see what I'm saying? In other words, a smaller, smaller class, a smaller class <coughs> interacts more with the instructor unless y'all are all introverts. And if that's true, you need to drop and take another class because that ain't gonna work with me, all right? Y'all gonna have to talk. Not while I'm talking, but talk, interact, okay? Mr. Saab, you understand? Yeah. All right, you, you seem like a quiet storm over there. I'll make sure you understand. Mm -hmm. Have I had you before? Yeah. I thought I did. I, what class was it? Yeah, but summer. It had to be the summer because I usually teach 102 in the summer. Yeah. I thought I recognized your name. Well, how, how many, anybody else besides Miss C? Anybody else had me before? You, you had me. Anybody else? Nobody else? Three. Okay, so these three people can tell you. Now, you had me about a year ago. Miss mm -hmm. C, when did you have me? Last time was 2000, summer 2012. Okay, 2012. Okay, with me? Okay, so she can attest, and excuse me, last name, Miss Hall. I, I thought it was Hall. Miss Hall, she had me like last semester, right? Not summer, but spring. You had me for 120. So these three people, I don't, you, well, I don't care what you ask them. I'm very confident that they'll say one of the things I am is fair, and I'm laid back, and I try to make the classroom comfortable. I can try to make the classroom as comfortable as possible. It only takes one person to make this classroom awkward. People, if you're scared that you're awkward, just keep your mouth shut and you won't have to worry about it. Okay? I hate to say that to be blunt. If it offends you, I'm sorry. I don't care. All right? But that is important. 
Have you ever been in a classroom where one person answers every question? And they're usually wrong, but they try to answer every question, and it just makes the classroom what? Makes it awkward. And nobody wants to come to class. The teacher doesn't even want to come to class. So don't be that person. All right, now that I've offended everybody, let's get back to this. All right, my office email is right here. I don't know where that came from. Hmm. Anybody have an idea where that? I haven't done anything on this page. I don't know why that would be there. Okay. There's my office email. That would be the second best way to contact me. The first way is by my cell phone. Notice I did not say anything about my office phone. You're not going to catch me in my office unless it's Friday morning from 9 to 1. That's when I'm in my office, pretty much. Um, most of the time I'm in here. That's why I fix all my classes in here. Every one of my classes is in this room. Why? Because the other teachers don't want to fool with this and they don't want to fool with the whiteboard. They want the old dry erase. They want the whole wall with the whiteboard on it. They don't want this thing. So I've enabled all my classes to be in here. Um, this is not a camera. It's a speaker and a microphone system. It's supposed to be pretty techno savvy. I don't know. I'm trying it out, but right now, it's taken like an hour for it to convert. Oh, I can't do it now, but the last class still hadn't converted, so I guess it'll convert hopefully by the end of this class so I can upload it. My, 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 all my classes are online. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But first way to contact me is cell phone, either text or call. If it's important, if Mr. Saab uh, has a family crisis and he has to go to Houston, that would be something he needs to text me about. If your dog is sick and you have to take it to the veterinarian, that is not an emergency because you're going to be here probably the next time we meet. If something is going to take you out for more uh, equal to a week or more, then you need to let me know so I can make you absent one day out of that week so you won't get that stupid email and so we won't have to worry about it. Um, I'll work with you on attendance if, like, you know, you have a job, sometimes you're not going to be able to come to class. And see, that's one thing about this. I'm, I can't stand this monitor, okay? I'm sorry. Y'all don't have to sit over here. Uh, one thing that I hate um, about some of the teachers at Tri-County, and you think that's the way this thing's in the way, um, is they think that this is a residential campus. And it's not. It's a community campus. It is a community college. People have jobs, people have lives, people have kids, people have mothers and fathers, people have brothers and sisters. You have things that come up. You have 40 hours of work to week, a week. 40 hours a week to work. I mean, there are things that happen. And for some ivory tower god or goddess to sit up here and say, well, you should be here 100% of the time. That's unreal. Now, if you are a, you, uh, you live on a, on a residential campus and you have over a 2100 SAT score and you take eight to 10 classes and you make an A in every single one of them and you study 56 hours a week, then yeah, you should do what the residential people do. But this is not a residential campus. Tri County is not a residential college. So, the cell phones, you have daycare call, go out in the hallway. If you have your mother call, go out in the hallway. If you have your husband call, go out in the hallway. That's what the hallway is for. It's for you to carry on conversations, not in the classroom. All right? Because this is not a residential campus. You have things that take you away from the classroom. So does that mean I fail you and you live in a ditch for the rest of your life? No. It means that we have to work together. I have a phone. I have a nine-year-old, fixing to be 10, of course. If you ask him, he's already 10. And he goes to McClay's. Now, if you live around here, it's not McClay's, it's McClay's, because that's what the original school is called, and that's what the McClay's have called themselves. They call them McClay's. They don't say McClay's. But we had all these transplants coming around here since the school started, and McClay's is too redneck, so we got to call it McClay's. So anyway, 
I live in the McAleese community. I was born and raised there. We call it McAleese. Henry McAleese started school back in the early 1900s. He called himself McAleese. So when, if he calls himself McAleese and we call it McAleese, then it's McAleese. All right. Anyway, he goes to McAleese. And if I get a call from McAleese, then I know that he's tried to take the, the uh, what do you call them, the police officers that work in the resource officer he's tried to take his gun or he's been in a fight or he's done something he's not supposed to or he's sick so i'm going to answer that phone call and then i got my mother she's 77 and she's hard as a rock i mean she's got a little jeep and she drives around with her dogs in the back of the car and she checks fences and she carries her little pea shooter and she'll shoot you if you come too close but if she calls that means the cows are out or there's an emergency or something and I need to answer that call. So there are times that I need to answer my phone call and I'll say, excuse me, I have to take this and I'll go out there and I'll take it. But to sit here and tell you that you can't use your phone is very hypocritical and I just don't believe it. Now, can you abuse it? Yes. Can I abuse it? Yes. If you come up here and answer me, answer a and ask me a question and I'm texting, that's rude. So when I'm talking and you're texting, what is that? It's rude. So don't do it. Just go outside. That's all I ask. Pick up your phone, go outside, text. Text all day long if you want to. Just do it in the hallway. I completely chased a rabbit on that one because I went over a whole hand out there. I'm sorry. Anyway, I don't know how I got started on that. Oh, that I'm very fair when it comes to things. There's no need to Mr. Saab, Ms. Hall, and Ms. C, you can jump in here anytime. There is no need to go spastic on me. If you miss a test or if your test falls apart while you're taking a test or lightning strikes your house, do you need to call me up at midnight and say, I need you to reset the test? No. You just see me in the next class and I'll reset the test. Even if it's past the deadline. Okay? Don't take advantage of me though. After about the third or fourth lightning strike on your house, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you to take the test somewhere else. Okay? So, this chair is really bothering me. Oh, I'm going to sit on this side a little bit so I can just not see more of the class. All right. So, I tell you what, one word, I'll see what the students that have had me before. One word, I want you to, I'm going to give you, try to stall here and give you one word, think of one word to describe my class and you took my 102 you took my 120 and what did you take name the classes you took are I I different oh, boy you are going back yeah, yeah. that was when i was department Starting head was i i was department head then mm -hmm. and then i moved over to arts and sciences and then I took, I took 120 probably yeah. It's probably 120. All right, one class, one word. What would, how would you describe my class? Laid back. Reasonable. reasonable. You're the first person that's ever said reasonable. Wow. What would you say? Huh? Entertaining. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I, I consider that a compliment because. How many people do you know that calls a class entertaining? I think that's a compliment because I sure don't want people to call it boring. But anyway, you can go to ratemyprofessor.com. Just don't tell me what it says because I don't. There's three things I can't stand. I can't stand to hear myself on video. I can't st uh, hear myself on audio. I can't stand to see myself on video, and I can't stand to hear what people say about me. Okay, so don't tell me what it says. But rate my professor. I I really. Uh, endorse rate my professor because it helps you decide if you need to drop a class before you need to drop a class um, I would highly suggest you go through and check all your advisors I mean your teachers if you if they're not on there go look up their name at another college and if they're not on rate my professor then you're rolling the dice if they are on rate my professor and they're below a two two or below you need to drop because they suck, okay, in my opinion. And I got an opinion like everybody else. All right, so that's a little bit about me.
There are a couple of questions on the test that come from this. Why? Because I'm full of myself? No. Because we had a mandate come down a long time ago, or about a year ago, that uh, we have to put things, we have to make sure that students are reading our handouts and our syllabi. So what I decided to do is put some questions off the handouts and syllabi on the test that gives the students extra points and it's also doing what they want us to do. So some people do it quizzes, some people do it other ways. I don't know how they do it, but I do it with about 10 questions. And those 10 questions are all on your test and they're all just about impossible to miss. But do I have people miss them? Yep. Okay, you'll see when we see the first test, you'll see what I'm talking about. I think there's two questions that come off this test, off this handout. One is information pertaining to how to contact me. That's probably going to be email and phone number, cell phone number. That's one test. That's one test question. And then the other one is about my history, somewhere in here. Okay? So make sure you read that handout, and that's why I send it out first. The syllabi. Syllabi is on the email that I sent out. Oh. You can tell when teachers don't use technology because it logs you out in like five seconds. If everybody was using technology, it would be a longer logout time. All right. So here is, let's go with syllabus. Syllabi. There we go. Now, some of you can pick up on my sarcasm, some of you can't, but I have to be, uh, in a, in a, you either have to be a little bit crazy or a little bit sarcastic to be a teacher. Um, but I have to put this statement on here because, as it says, I have to say this due to students in the past printing all of the syllabi out. Yep, I've had students print out six syllabi and come to class with all six syllabi. You figure it out. I don't know. But anyway, you, you click on the one that you want. That's the 110. And we will look at it. And I'll try to pick some questions out there that you'll see on the test. Uh, one question is going to be pretty much about the weights of the, of the grades. That's one question. I think that's the only question I pull off the syllabus. Uh, there's the book. I've always I always get questions about the book. You do not have to bring a book to class. You do not have to have a book. The access code is most important. <clears throat> Once you have the access code to My Labs Plus, you have an online book. So the book that you bring to class or the book that you have at home is up to you. You can bring an old book. Math that hadn't changed. Last time I checked, they hadn't changed in, you know, Two or three thousand years because it's been around for a long time. Um, now the level of mathematics keeps going up, but the the concept of adding two plus three hasn't changed. Um, so you can use an old college algebra book. You can use an old algebra book. You can come in and share a book with somebody. You can buy a used book. You can buy a brand spanking new book. But the book does not make the grade. You make the grade. And all of my stuff is online, and the book is online. So if you're an online person, you use the online. If you're a conventional person and you want to use the old paper and pencil, then you use the online homework and online test with your book. How do you get the access to the book? The access you can get at the bookstore by itself, which usually, usually, yeah, you don't need the book. You can go by and get the access code, but usually, conveniently, the bookstore runs out of the access code. Well, I went last night and they didn't have any use. So. But what about the access code? I didn't, I didn't know about that. Okay. Yes, sir. When you try to log in, it just tells you you can buy it off Yes, way. you can buy it. I was going to tell you, you can do it. When you log on, uh, the way you log on is you go through Blackboard. I don't use Blackboard. I don't use Blackboard. I don't use Blackboard. I don't use Blackboard. Okay? But you have to go. They try to force you to use Blackboard to try County Tech. So what they do is they put a link. Um, blackboard on the left hand side you click on it now the primary and I'm, I'm getting off I'm getting off kilter here but I need to tell you this so you can log on 
you need to use Firefox, okay? That, and I don't know about the Apple people because I don't, I don't know what, I guess Safari or whatever, you need to, you need to contact MyLabs Plus and ask them, but uh, can y'all pull up Firefox on Apple's? You can? Okay. Okay. And Google Chrome and Internet Explorer. Have those three because I'm going to tell you what happens. They tell us to use Firefox. And when you go through the link on uh, the, the, the we call the uh, My Lab Plus link or something, you click on it, I think you have to click on another one. And then if you're using Firefox, there'll be a shield up in the top left hand corner or top right hand corner. You need to click on it and say yes or whatever, answer the questions, and then it'll run. If you have an instance where you pull up a test or homework or something doesn't work right with my Labs Plus change to another search engine like Google Chrome and see if that fixes it. All right, but the ones they tell us, My Labs Plus tells us to in, to instill to use Firefox. But if Firefox isn't working, switch over to another one. See if that fixes it. That's all I can tell you. I don't have any control over that. But. When you go to My Labs Plus, there's a 14-day trial period, so everybody can log on right now. I want you to log on before Monday. I want you to get registered before Monday. When you get to the 14-day trial period banner, I think it'll have, do you want to buy an access code? You click on it, put in your credit card, and it's about $10 to $20 cheaper than the bookstore. Okay? So there's three ways to get an access code. One, you get it with the book. Two, to get it in the bookstore, which they conveniently run out. And three, get it online on the 14-day trial period. Get logged on today and try to get that access code done so we won't have problems 14 days from now when the access code, when the 14-day trial period runs out. They deactivate you because you haven't paid for the access code. Then when you try to log on, it's going to cause problems. Just get it done now please, before Monday. Okay? Does that help you out, Miss C? Okay? Make sure if you're going to get a book, get the right one. If you don't get a book, use the fifth edition, use the fourth edition. I don't care. TI-83, we will use it, but I like to teach the bare basics. I can, a monkey, I could teach my nine-year-old how to use calculator, but it doesn't take any brain work. Okay? So that's enough to explain. Yes, sir. I don't think so, because I'd tell you how to print it out by section by section. So I don't know. What is the difference between, did anybody buy an access code online? Does anybody know the price of it online? OK, what's the price of a book and an access code? OK, so you say. A little bit of money. No, I I will pull up the book every day, and all you have to do is print out ten pages at a time, eight to ten pages at a time, and you have that whole section in your notebook. So, and I'll show you how to do that Monday. The first day of class, I go over classroom stuff. The second day of class, I go over my labs plus. So you can beg, borrow, steal a book. You can share a book. You can use an old book. It's on a scale from 1 to 10, on you passing this class, you bringing a book to class is about a 2. Okay? It's not that important. The TI-83 is more important. The calculator is more important than the book. Now, should you get a calculator-based, a calculus-based 89 or a HP-91 or anything like that? Only if you're going into calculus later on. Um, if you've got a TI-83 or 84 at home, just bring it. We're not going to be doing anything with a TI-89. You don't really do anything to it until you get to count two. Okay? So, these are fine. If you got somebody at home that ain't got no batteries in it, put some batteries in it and bring it to class. This is TI-XA. You gave this to me. You are kidding me. People leave their calculators in the classroom, and I keep them in my office, and after the semester's over, I give them to students. 
Oh, listen, that, that people leave TI-84s in the classroom. I had one student leave it downstairs, and the security guard got it and said, I kept it for a while. Nobody came by, so we're giving them to you so you can let students have them. I said, okay. So, I don't understand. All right, these objectives. Objectives are 20 cent, 25 cent word for a bureaucrat needs a job. So, if you want to read those, more power to you, but here's a test question right here. 60 20 20, write it down. 60 20 20. That's the weights in this classroom. Now, I got to stop the recorder now. Sometimes I pause the recording. For this. All right, so that takes care of that. And there is one of your questions. So now we're up to three questions on your test that are just impossible for you to pass. Get right. One is my phone number and my email address. Two is about my history, and three is sixty twenty twenty. And on this question, the the, the, the multiple choices are sixty twenty twenty, water, quack, and thirty thirty thirty. And people pick thirty thirty thirty. Why is thirty 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 not an option? I'm sorry, what? So you see why I'm a little bit sarcastic on some things. It's a little bit unbelievable. I'm going to conclude y'all since I don't see y'all. I'd stick my head out here. Okay? Um, that The question like that would be wrong. But if there's a way to break an amble with a banana, students find it. Let me tell you. All right, let me pull up something else. Let me pull up, and you're going to receive these, these handouts that I'm going to show you now, I'm going to send you later. I'm going to send you my, my locator card. I'm going to send you that later. i got to do that today. i got to do several things. So you're going, to be sending, you're going to be seeing some emails today or tonight with all these uh, handouts that I'm going to send you, that I'm going over right now. Uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is things you'll be graded on. I don't see it, so I'll have to pull it up. Hold on just a second. i got to find it because it was last semester. Just give me a second. There we go. Things you'll be graded on. And I just want you to look at that for a second. Just read over it right quick. I want you to write some of these things down because you're going to need to make them kind of priority in your notebook. Homework in now ignore course compass. That's what we used to use. That's when students enrolled themselves. Uh, now you don't do that. Tri-County Tech does it, so it's not Course Compass anymore. It's My Labs Plus. So that's why you have to go through Blackboard. Um, so just ignore that Course Compass. Web assigns for calculus. So if you have me, and usually people do that, the 110 students go to my 111, the 111 goes to my 140, and so on. So you need to get more people in here. Y'all need to find some people that want to take Math 110 and get them in here before Friday, all right? Okay, because the more people that are in here, the more we'll have for 111 to make next semester, and then you'll take 140 in the summer. And then that way you'll take uh, Calc 2 in the fall. And I teach, usually I teach up to Calc 2 here at the Anderson campus because it's hard for get the Anderson campus to make for Calc 3 and DPQ, although I have taught it here. Anyway, all our homework is online. Make sure you write that down. All my homework is online. I do not do anything except the in-class tests, which are paid, but I have to give in-class tests. Um, and that will be as a quiz grade. You can print out your homework and do it your, on your own, like the conventional paper and pencil. You can do that. I'll show you how to do that Monday. Um, if you don't see a start date or an end date, you need to go into handy mode and send me five or six emails and five or six tests, text and call me three or four times, right? No. What does it say at the end of that? You don't need to what? 
You don't need to worry about it. Who in here needs to worry about what you cover and the dates you cover? Me. You don't need to worry about that. These hammies, I can't stand hammies. Hammy the squirrel, God. They come in here and first, when's the test due? When's the test due? When's the homework due? When's the homework due? I haven't even covered a dadgum problem. And they're asking, when's the homework due? When's the homework due? When's the test due? When's the test due? I just ignore them and look, look at them like they're a nut. Online test. <clears throat> I give you two chances. Now, this is an algebra class. I may give you five chances. Why? Because some people believe they don't need to do homework. Okay? And if I give you five tests with 30 questions on each attempt, how many questions is that by the time you get to the fifth test? Well, four tests, four times 30 is 120, right? That's 120 problems that you've done before that fifth test. What could you call those 120 problems? Homework. So, sometimes when there is a, I know I'm fast. Um, if sometimes when, like factoring, you know how to factor a trinomial, you know how aggravating that can be? Well, somebody that, somebody that is new to uh, factoring, uh, it can be very aggravating. How is the only way to get better at factoring? Practice, practice, practice. Factoring trinomials without completing the square is just like with using the reverse FOIL is the closest thing to playing a musical instrument in mathematics that there is. Okay? In other words, you don't just sit at a piano unless you're gifted and you're one half of one percent of the population and play Beethoven's Fifth or play a musical piece without messing up unless you have practiced hours upon hours upon hours upon hours. Okay? So, sometimes I do give you five chances, but that's probably because I want you to learn the material and you're not smart enough to do the homework. Okay? Some of y'all, most of y'all are. I'm just saying there's some out there that don't believe they need to do it. And by the time they get to that fourth test, they've done pretty much a whole section of homework by doing 120 problems. Some of y'all are starting to figure it out. Okay? So, sometimes, no matter what, I take the highest what? I take the highest of the five, highest of the four, highest of the two. So if I give you five attempts, I'll take the highest grade out of the five. You make 100 on the first one, then you get zeros on the rest of them, the highest grade is 100. I actually had a student call me up and ask me, I made a 98 on the first test, do I need to take the other test? Quick. You should have said, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and take all of them. Yeah. See if you can get to a 99. Okay. This Bush's fault. I give you 7 to 10 days to take the test. Why do I give y'all 7 to 10 days? Because I want y'all to make 100? Or because y'all have 5 dead grandmothers? And 5 flat tires. And lightning hits your house. And flood came. And Y'all ever notice when you're in a regular conventional class and test day comes around, how many people don't show up? You ever notice that? Because they had five flat tires and five dead grandmothers. And so I give y'all seven to ten days because some of y'all have to mourn for your five dead grandmothers three or four days. Oh, you still got four or five days to take the test. <laughs> Damn, he's a bastard. All right? You take the test on your time, not class time, except when you take those impossible in-class tests that I give. Multiply, uh, multiple choice and open answer. You can review and print out the test even after. I'll show you how to do that Monday. Miss C, was I doing online with you back in 97? Okay, math 155. So I did it. That, did I give any class test? No, I'm saying what class? It was all online. No, I'm talking about the, the first class you oh, took. Yeah. I did? I don't even remember it. Was all, that was probably 98. Because 98, I, mean, I was starting to bring in Course Compass in 96. So I was probably 
I was probably. Huh. Maybe have projector or something. Huh. That's neat. I'm, I, I can't remember back that far. But anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. Everything's online, and pretty much here's the 60 20 20. There it is right there. So there's another test question. So I'm up to how many now? Four, five? Yes, Hubert. Thank you, class. Appreciate the interaction. And that's that. So that's an important. That's an important. Now again, four unit tests. Oh, that reminds me. Well, we'll do that in just a minute. We got to do the calendar in just a minute. Um, we'll go ahead and move to something else. Let's see. Where's my class courtesies? My number one rule, kind of like Hubert's golden rule. All right, I take it from the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated, or do unto others and run, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Oh my God, I quoted the Bible. Call the ACLU. Or let's take up the offering, one of the two. Fried chicken at lunch. All right. What does that mean? Well, I don't know what these three people can tell you, but in 20 years... I think uh, I started in, I started teaching part time in January of '95. So somebody subtract '95 from this year. I think that's close to 20 years. Okay, how much? 21. So I should be getting close to 20 because it was about a year before I got a full time job at Tri County. So I'm getting well. I'm past 20 as far as teaching. But as far as Tri-County Tech, it's been 20 years full-time. How many people you think I've had thrown out of my class? Anybody want to take a guess? Three. One person, just socially awkward. You ever met one of those people? You tell a joke and 15 minutes later they laugh? <laughs> the second person, he had issues. He had, he had overcompensation issues. He had a girlfriend that was in the class, and the girlfriend would ask me a question, and he would go, you don't need to do it that way. You need to do it my way. And finally, after about the third time, I told him to get out. And he said, fine. I don't need this class anyway. I said, well, good. Get out. And he said, come on. And he told his girlfriend to come on. And she sat there, and she said, I ain't going nowhere with you. And that just made it worse. And then I had to call security because they started fighting. And anyway, to make a long story short, I'll tell you a little story. After that semester, she dumped him, and now she's working for a senator in Washington, D.C. And I think that's great because she was on a one-way street to hell with that guy because he would have been one of those guys with an axe and a knife and hitting her or whatever. He was he had issues, but he got thrown out of my class. And believe it or not, the third one was female. Third one was female, and it was at this campus. She just didn't like me, so I got her thrown out. So three in twenty years. Now I'm sorry, three in twenty years. Somebody take a calculator. Well, I can do it in my head. Three over twenty is the same as one point five over ten, right? And that'd be point one five. So that's 0 0.15, three, I don't know how you would do it. Oh, well, you know, you gotta do it in three. I'm comparing apples to oranges. So let's say I have 150 students every semester, three per semester, that'd be 450 students. Let's just round it off to 500. 500 times 200 is what? Or 20, sorry, that's 5,000. So then you take three over 5,000. Somebody take three over 5,000 and calculate what you get. Okay, I'll do it myself. Three over 5,000. Thank you for the interaction class. Three over 5,000. Somebody will do it now and say, oh, I got it. Shut up. I'm doing it now. That comes out to be 0 0.00006, which is not even 0%. You still got a good chance of getting thrown out. No, you don't have a good chance unless you're a unless you're a socially awkward overcompensator Sorry. that don't like me. Okay. Okay.
Okay, some of y'all don't even interact after that. Treat students the way that I want to be treated. Cell phones. I have a cell phone. It goes off. MacLeese or mom calls. I'm going to answer. Same way for you. Go out in the hallway, answer it. Go out in the hallway, text. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. If it goes off in class, it doesn't bother me. Now, if you keep doing it, it's going to start bothering me. First time, just like with anything, I give you three strikes. First time, I put out a warning. I'll say, I thought I told people to da 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 which means discipline, uh, classroom etiquette, cell phones, whatever. I, I tell people, I say, okay, I thought I told y'all at the beginning of the semester. That means that some DA in the room is doing something that I told them not to do. And then that's when y'all all turn around and try to figure out who it is. The second time I'll call you out and embarrass you. Not embarrass you, but I'll call you out and say, is there some kind of communication problem? And then third, I'll just ask you to leave, or I'll, if you don't leave, I'll get security to ask you to leave because you're causing a distraction for, and you're causing the environment to not be comfortable. I've never had a problem with that except for those three people. And I don't think the first one, he just, oh, he was such awkward. He just made the whole class uncomfortable. Uh, <clears throat> attendance. Let me go over this because attendance. <clears throat> I think it's ridiculous. There's three rules in Hubert's life. One, nothing's free. Two, there's always one person. What does that mean? No matter what group you're in, this group right here, there's going to be one person that's going to screw up everything. Whether you're in work, whether you're in a church club, whether you're in a golf club, whether you're in the fire department, there's always one person that you just want to beat the hell out of. There's always going to be that one person. And there's always going to be that one person in this class. All right? That's what happened to the attendance policy. At Tri-County Tech up to two years ago, it didn't matter. But our federal government and our leadership getting tough on crime, they cracking down on the one half of 1% 1 of the people that's milking the financial aid system. So they're cracking down and making us do attendance so they can crack down on that half a person per 1,000 people that's milking the system. So we have to take attendance. And I do it. I took it today. As long as you cross the threshold of that door, you're here. If you have to go do something, if you have to go to daycare, if you have to go to the doctor, you don't have to tell me. Just cross the threshold and say, Hubert, I'm here. And I'll mark you here and everything's fine. I need to know that you're in, that you're cognitive of the classroom so you can, so I can keep you from getting a letter or an email it says you need to be in class, you need to contact your instructor. Okay, I don't want those to go out. So let's say that Miss Hall is going to Jamaica for a week and she's already planned it. So she needs to send me an email that week that says, I'm working on homework, whatever. Okay? If she sends me that email, I will I will mentally mark her here when I see the attendance, I'll mark her here. So not because I'm trying, not because Miss Hall is trying to milk the system for I think it's three thousand dollars out of like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, she's not trying to milk the system. I'm just trying to keep her from having to get a letter that she's going to accuse me of writing that I didn't write. Okay. So there's two ways around this. One is to cross over the threshold, come up here, give me a note, or tell me you're here. Two. Let me know that you're doing something that week if you have to be off campus all week. Because if you don't show up two consecutive days, you're going to get a bureaucratic email, and I don't want that to happen. Okay? Because then you're going to email me, I've got this tennis email. Okay? All right. I generalize when I speak. <clears throat> I do not sit at home and say, you know what? <clears throat> I don't like people with two vowels in their last name. So, Mr. Saab, I really don't like you. I'm going to pick on you until you leave my class. I don't sit home and do that. Has it got two B's or two A's? Okay, two consonants in your name. All right? So, I don't like you, so 
And there's two things wrong with that. One, it's not right. And two, you don't pick on people you don't like. You pick on people you like. So I'm not going to sit home and do that. I generalize when I speak. I have fun. It's called joking. It's called sense of humor. It's something that the America, that United States has lost in the last 20 years. You can't make a joke about a person. Oh my God. Sausage party. <laughs> Have you heard about this? The people are complaining that the potatoes are racist. You know what? I love America. I fought for America and I will fight for America. But we turned into the biggest bunch of pansies in the last 20 years. I, I ain't kidding you. We are. We are a bunch of pansies. We can't even make a joke without somebody being offended. The potatoes are racist and the Mexicans and the tacos are racist. Who else was racist on there? It's a car okay, there's two problems I got with this. One, it's a cartoon. Two, it's food. I'm sorry. We don't have a sense of humor. We all gonna live in a ditch. Alright, and that's things I expect in the classroom. Let's see if there's anything else I want you to look at. Oh yeah. This. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Academic calendar. Get your calendars out because we're going to talk about some things. Academic calendar, when you hit the message, when you get to the tabs, your TCTC account, up at the messenger, I think it's called messenger, or it might say student for you, I don't know, but it'll say messenger, go down to the middle of the page, and there'll be a link that says academic calendars. You pick fall 2016, it'll take you to this page. Right here, I don't, I don't look at this page because it confuses me, so I go to this page. Session A, you are session A. That's 14 weeks. Anything with session A applies to you. So here's session A, first day of class. Session A, last day to add classes is when? Friday, so you need to put that in your calendar. All these things you need to put in your calendar right now. I don't know. I don't think so. And the reason that is, is that I've been told in the past by people that's on the calendar committee that they try to keep from doing some of the smaller days to try to give you a longer break during Thanksgiving break or during Labor Day, I mean during fall break or whatever. I don't know. I've never been on the calendar committee, so that's the only committee I've never been on. Yes? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Uh, I can't teach if I don't have a class. And that's what I tell my students. I'm sorry. I'm a veteran, and I'm gonna I'm gonna acknowledge those two days. If y'all don't show up, I can't teach. Anyway, I'm sorry. I should have paused the video, shouldn't I? Uh, let's say the recording. Session A, last day to drop. Write that down. Last day to drop classes, I guess, without record. In other words, if you drop August 23rd, if you drop by August 23rd, I don't think the class will show up on your record at all. So you need to put that in there. Session A, summer incompletes. That's last semester. Don't worry about that. Um, go down, go down. I don't know. Anybody know what session J is? October the 11th through December 6th. That must be second, second session. Second half of the fast track. Okay, rule. okay. All right, session J. That's not us. Let's go up here. Fall break, October 17th. Put that down. Last day to withdraw from classes, and that's to withdraw with a W, is October 18th. You need to write that down. That's the last day to drop with a W. After that, it's WF or WA or whatever. I don't know. I don't. 
I try to get students to drop by then. Most of my students don't have to drop because they're usually not that bad off. Uh, I'm looking for the pre-advising. Where's the pre-advising? Session A. Let's see that enrollment process begin. Where is it? Yeah, I guess that's it. Huh? Well, there it is, right here. Yeah. Write this one down. October 18th. I call it pre-advising. That's when you have a four-week window. Four weeks is a month. A four-week window to go by your advisor's office and get unlocked for spring registration. 70% of y'all do that. 30% call your advisor up in the middle of his vacation with his nine-year-old son in New York while he's on the the taxi to go out, the, the, the boat to go out to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and saying, are you going to be in your office today? I'm needing to register. Click. Well, sure, head all over there. Meet you there. You know, I tell my nine-year-old son, you wonder why I get frustrated. Well, people wonder why teachers get frustrated. That kind of stuff. There's always one. You know, I didn't get registered. Uh, class start Wednesday and it's Friday. One is at the end of the week. Two is in the middle of summer break. He'd be lucky if he gets to talk to the janitor. Because we're gone. Anyway. Uh, let's go down. Okay, here's test questions. Two test questions. This one right here, last day of class. It's when? November 29th. And here's the second test question. When is the exams? 30 through the 6th. December 6th, my birthday. Everybody bring me a present. Okay. Oh, there is something else I need to let y'all know. If I get funding, I'm going to be at a conference November the 17th through the 20th. You need to write that down. What I will probably do is put a video up or something and make sure that y'all do it. And the reason I'll make sure y'all do it is I'll give y'all in-class test on that video. Okay? So, you need to write that down. And that's the dates that you need to know about. Anytime you need to know these dates, you can go to TCTC. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be What? It shouldn't, why? It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It is? Well, good. Well, that's good. So, y'all will see me, unless I leave early. I'll probably leave Wednesday. So, it'll probably affect that day. Dang old Denver, dang old Mile High City. Mm -hmm. And I'm just showing you where it is. Okay, that's good. I don't. Bush is fault. Y'all see where Bush? Tried to kill all the people in New Orleans again? <laughs> yeah, he tried it in, uh, when he was president. Yeah. You didn't hear Did Kanye he West. Him? Kanye West was doing a fundraiser and he said that Bush was trying to kill all the people in New Orleans. What's the guy that does that crazy, I don't, I never watch the movies because I think they're stupid. Shaggy, or the guy that does this. The guy. He's a movie. It's a comedy. I don't think it's very funny. What? Yeah. What's his the actor's name? Let's see. He's not that funny. Anyway, he was standing beside Kanye West, and they were doing this kind of a benefit for something. And it was during the time of the. And Kanye West was standing there, and he said, "You know, 
I hate this because Bush is trying to kill all those people in New Orleans. And that guy was standing there and looking at him like, I can't believe he just said that. Yeah, Bush took the Navy, told the Navy to go out in the middle of the Gulf and go in circles and maybe start a whirlwind and maybe that would start a hurricane and then push it and... You know, Kanye West, I believe he's retarded or something. Huh? He said, yeah, he said that on... You can go up and Google. Google it. Kanye West, Bush trying to kill people in New Orleans. And, he's, and, and that guy, he's sitting there going... Some of these people that's in Hollywood, I think they sniffing gasoline or something. Snorting it or something. Anyway... I don't forgot where. Oh, message. Uh, message center right here. Do y'all have a message center on y'all's tab? Mm -hmm. Click that, and it's right there. Okay? And that's how you find those things. All right. Now, let me see. I'm going to make sure class ends at what time? 11? Okay, we're good. Um, what I want y'all to do for homework, and I think I've covered everything I need to cover today. Does anybody have any questions for me? I've covered books. I've covered calculators. I've covered uh, My Labs Plus. I've covered courtesies and everything. You will be getting some more emails from me with handouts, my locator card, stuff like that to show you when I'm in my office, which, oh, that's another thing. But I told you, I'm going to be in here on Monday and Wednesdays pretty much all day. So I'm not going to be. I may be in my office maybe an hour after 2.30 when I'm out of this class. So, but I'll probably be in here playing with this stuff. So that's where I'll be on Monday and Wednesday. My office hours are pretty much going to be on Tuesday and Thursday if you need them. But you're going to see, as far as these people know, I answer so many questions in class because I don't have to do online testing and I mean, in-class testing and checking homework. But I have eight to 11 days that I can actually teach so most of your questions that you send me via Ask My Instructor, which I'll show you Monday, I go over in class. So that works out real good. All right, who's got questions for me as far as classroom stuff? I hope they get this chair fixed. But my left side is hurting right now. Mm -hmm. Who's got questions? Nobody has questions. I covered this stuff so well, y'all don't have questions. Y'all gonna have to interact or y'all not gonna get no biscuits. And you certainly ain't gonna get pizza if you don't start interacting. Did I ever feed y'all? I fed y'all, didn't I? Biscuits. Well, you must have had a morning class. Did I feed y'all? Did I feed you? Okay, that was, that was before I started feeding. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, that's when I was on welfare. No, no, Actually, I just, oh, uh, that was at Pendleton, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't do it at Pendleton because somebody would have said something. Pendleton. Ugh. Who's got questions? Nobody has any questions. All right, Monday. This is your homework for Monday. Get on my math, or my labs plus. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. I don't care if it's 14 grade grade period. I want you on it. Two. Get your calculator. Get your supplies. Make sure you got graph paper and colored pencils. And a straight edge, make sure you include those because in graphing, I'm going to cover that. And the third thing, decide what you're going to do on a book. I don't care, you decide that. And y'all get out of here, have a good day. You got any questions for me? I'm up here. And stop.